Oh my god, it's time for mail! It's been like two months since the last mail video. Um, simply because I wasn't getting enough mail to justify making a whole video out of it, but I finally got enough at this point that I can do it. I think that the lack of mail was becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy, where people kind of were not even sure if I was still doing mail videos <laughs> because I wasn't making them. But I wasn't making them because I wasn't getting enough mail. You know, so it's kind of an, an Ouroboros or whatever there. And also, there was the fact that throughout the month of January, the box was inactive. I think there were a couple people who got returned to sender on their uh, packages because at the end of December 31st was when I was supposed to pay off the P.O. box, and then I didn't realize that till the end of January, that it was not a just automatically renewed payment. So I've still got the box for another six months. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be living here for another six months. There's a chance I'm going to move at some point. Um, so if you want to send mail, now's the time to send it before it's too late. Although I can probably have somebody go and pick up the, uh, the stuff from the P.O. box, you know, even after I move, if that happens. So, anyways, let's get into the mail. First, we've got a small lever... First, we have a small letter from Vacuuminator, a frequent commenter and uh, Twitter at responder. It seems to be a short letter that also comes with the Vacuuminator's business card, which I think I've shown before on one of these. Greetings once again, Digibro. It is I, the man who takes major inspiration from yourself and the rest of the procrastinators while carving out his own YouTube legend, the Vacuuminator. Today, I write to you with thoughts on your musical work because since the time of the last letter sending I have begun playing a lot paying a lot more attention to your music which I had only given a cursory glance beforehand as I was just so interested in your videos at the time that when you said music was just a side project I thought it probably wouldn't be as great as it turned out being but I have found myself visiting your SoundCloud page around two to six times a day at present as I am completely enamored with almost everything on there wow my favorite songs of yours are as follows, Open, Waves at Dawn, I'm Mortal, Humans Are Okay, Ghost Tribe, Actualize, White Nigga, Get Action, Failure, Shallow, Seethe, Deadline, Broken Brilliance, Paradise in Name Only, and For Stella the Magic. That's basically every rap song I've ever posted <laughs> with any degree of production behind it. Um, each of these songs have really spoken to me on a personal level and have given voice to some of my innermost thoughts about the world and how it works to the point that the that thanks to these and the Decompression Chamber podcast, I've begun to think that you and I can be so like-minded at times that it is scary. However, I of course have no way of confirming it outside of continue to work some of these themes into the Vacuuminator saga, since you and I have never actually spoken, and I know that you aren't exactly big on the idea of people relating so much to your music. JFKM is a great track, by the way. But I felt that I needed to put this line of thought out there somewhere and a vlog on my second channel that I have no way of knowing if you see it simply will not do. Also, I would like to say that Get Action and For Stella the Magic work so well as motivational songs for artists that I have recently begun listening to Get Action when I get up in the morning and For Stella the Magic right when I go to sleep as the first speaks so much to my philosophy on video making and the second feels like an anthem song about a friend telling you that it's okay as long as you keep working hard you'll make it. And the funny thing is I have never been that into music to the point of where I used to tell people I don't really think about music that much outside of Toku. I don't even follow any bands or singers, I just listen to whatever sounds good to me, but now that I've found music that speaks to me so much, I find myself wanting to take a closer look at the artists who I have found or who I have a lot of songs I like and learn more about them. So thanks Digi, not only have you produced an amazing discography, but by doing so you have turned me into a music boy. I look forward to the full release of Gay and Dead with Bated Breath. Thank you, I'm glad you like my music so much. Um, I've really been getting into it lately. Um, really I have Shade to thank MZ Shaidu for, you know, becoming a beat guy. I mean, he's, you know, he doesn't work as fast as I do, but the fact that he started doing it at all is what inspired me to, like, really get into it. Because, you know, I've wanted to do music forever. I've been doing it on and off for years now. If you go to, you know, the Trial of the Golden Witch band camp, you can see album after album of bullshit that I put together. But I never wanted to take it all that seriously because it seemed like it wouldn't be worth the time investment. Like, the time it would take for me to get better at it... Um, you know, would just be distracting from my regular work. And I didn't have anybody who could just produce music for me to rap over, um, you know, because I'm, I'm terrible at making beats uh, other than weird uh, fucking acapella ones. So as soon as Shade started making music 
that's when it was like, oh my god, now I have an excuse. You know, now I can just go and make raps for these songs that Shade's producing, and not only will it help me in that I get a chance to rap, but it helps Shade in that he gets a way to promote his beats, you know, that uh, and a way to make money off of it even. So yeah, um... I'm glad that it's been that that it's been reaching people. I honestly, for years, thought there was no chance my music was ever going to be cared about by anyone. I, I thought it was always just going to be self-serving, and that no one would ever be interested. So it's, I mean, if you listen to the song "Done" on the uh, BC album from years back, like that song's basically about, like, yeah, no one's ever going to like this. You know, this is just for me, uh, and that's changed. So thanks to everybody who enjoys the music. All right, this next letter is from Ohio. doesn't have a name on it, but we'll find out. Well, the first thing I see when I open it up is a, a hand drawing of a girl that says a 15-year-old Tokyo uniform. Don't know who it is yet, though. Oh, there's a bunch of, there's like a whole bunch of notes on here. There's a little screamy face. This is some very small, uh, small point font. There's both a handwritten and a typed letter. It says, it's me again, but there's no clarification on who me is. It's me again. I work on my story every day and word count above 140,000. Holy shit. That is three times the length of what is considered a novel by National Novel Writing Month. So good job. Right now, a bunch of holes exist between major checkpoints slash events in the main story that can't seem to be filled. Help. My side story uses make it up as you go along and somehow only it is running smoothly though. I hope it'll, I'll end up getting what I need just during the writing process itself. I wasn't clear enough last time about my whole realism thing. Has the following type of thing hap ever happened in anime? One, you're shoving a curtain rod into your toilet because you decided to check your pockets in the bathroom. <laughs> what? Or two, someone puts the thing in the microwave for too long and now the house smells like burnt popcorn. On vacation, Miyako, Kazuya, and Cody went off on their own. The two 12-year-olds get distracted, and then, Mia, where's Kaz? Her little brother was now lost on the streets of New York. The family searches for two hours before calling 911, but Kaz is already at the police station. The good people of New York caught the kidnapper and brought them both to the station. If Kaz knew his dad's cell, the cop could have called dad directly and saved time for everyone. Sounds like real life, right? My realism fetish was born in Dragon Ball, not Z, episode 123, where launch misplaces... The Nyoibo for a mop handle. Okay, so you're looking for like, like weirdly specific situations that happen in real life that maybe are not thought of when constructing a story just out of cliches and bullshit. Yeah, I get you. Um, Hidamari Sketch is a show almost entirely comprised of stuff like that. I mean, it's just a daily life show, but it's all, you know, whereas a lot of cute girls shows are kind of well I guess, I guess a lot of them are about just that kind of stuff you know a lot of the slice of life shows are just about that um that feeling of just like here's a thing that we've all kind of experienced and you go oh yeah that has kind of happened you know he didn't write sketch and lucky star in particular are both really good about that kind of stuff um if a girl will claw another's eyes out for disliking the twilight books then this girl will totally kick me for falling all over her breasts Willingly ignoring the fact that she saw someone else grab my legs. Crying now. Is she always going to be angry at me for no reason? Is all my progress in trying to make her smile going to go to waste? Now the others will kill her for her hostility. I know I've wanted to slit her throat a few times, but more than that, I want her to stop yelling at me. If we can become friends, maybe even lovers because she is cute, then fuck that. That'd be great. Th I, this is very confu- Look, this is structured in a way where it's just like- like a paragraph and then a, a break and then it keeps going and I don't honestly know what I'm reading. I don't know if these are parts of the novel that this person's writing. My mom gave me all the love and support I needed but she failed as a parent. I'm 18 now and I still can't get a shower on a regular basis. I can't even do something when I see a pile of dirty dishes in the sink. I still can't even take the trash out right without her having to tell me to do it. Miyako, if you're gonna drag me over to Krista's like I asked you, there's a character named Miyako and a character named Krista in this story. You better go all the way. Please do what my mom never did. Point that gun at my head and make sure I do, instead of merely knowing how to. Um, then there's a Bojack Horseman quote. We need more... Oh, no, he's just saying, Bojack Horseman, we need more animes like it. And if you haven't watched Bojack Do It Now, it's beyond Miyazaki level. I don't know about all that. Uh, Bojack's fun, but... I mean, the animation is dog shit, for one. Um... 
It says, and make a video on it. So, and then there's handwritten in here. So it's a major point in my story that Miyako becomes popular in the 7th or 8th grade during 2007-2009. Do you know the popularity levels of anime in America and the probability of middle schoolers knowing about anime before Death Note came out? Maybe have one of her friends find hilarious clips of Lucky Star on YouTube. Lucky Star would not have been popular among middle schoolers in, in that era. Yeah, Death Note would be absolutely the ideal one to go for. I mean, you don't need to ask before Death Note because Death Note came out in 2006. Um, you could go for, like, Naruto, Bleach, um, maybe D. Grayman. Uh, let's see, 2006. Really popular enough to be among middle schoolers. Inuyasha, maybe. That, that'd be a little old by that point, but people still liked it. Anything on Adult Swim. Just look up what was on Adult Swim at the time. Um, when did middle schoolers in America start learning that anime was anime? I would say 2003, around when Shonen Jump started coming out and Adult Swim was getting big. Uh, if my story were ever to be animated or get a manga slash light novel, something involving visuals, the minion cut scenes from Twisted Metal Black look pretty dope. The comic-like scenes from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 are also pretty nice too. Shaft, Trigger, or something. Um, character designs slash illustrations by Tetsuya Nomura, Watanabe Akio, Fujiwara Akina, Keita, whoever drew them illustrations of the Japanese and Korean Goosebumps books. Yes, those Goosebumps books. But what, how, how do you have six designers on your show? It, it just sounds like a list of all of your favorite character designers. CG by David Productions, whoever made the Doom 64 sprites. I mistook them for models the first time I saw them. And there's a whole list of, uh, people who would do the music. And we need Gendy Tartakovsky and his whole crew in here, too. This is just a list of all the producers that you like, essentially. You don't need that many people. Um. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna skip some of these details. Attention audience members who want to write or are already writing fiction. If your story or aspects of it doesn't uh, cause you to squirm with glee at how amazing something you just discovered is, then something already going wrong. Months after having my two main characters' names set, I found out their meanings and things became even more awesome. Sun and Moon. Another thing I discovered is that Miyako's relationship from 11, dash th from 11 to 13 is the total opposite than 10 to 20 in more ways than I planned for. Jesus Christ, like our whole life story, I guess. Miyako's Guide to Surviving in America, step, question mark, question mark, question mark. As you can see, I've fallen in love with this fictional girl I made. How fucked am I? You're quite fucked. Someone draw me a picture of Phoenix Wright in the Uncle Sam pose so I can tell Digibro how much he needs to give back my flash drive so I can send him voice clips later. And that's it. Well, it sounds like your story's coming along... Just fine. 140,000 words is a lot of words. In fact, you will probably have to cut that down significantly if you want to get it published. Because first-time authors are usually not expected to write a gigantic book. Um, but, yeah, that's a lot of fucking words. That's more words than I've ever written of fiction. At least of one fiction. Um, still was no name on that the whole way through. Uh, I also, I, I got, I got coupons, I got coupons in my P.O. box for some, uh, wait, this one wasn't in my P.O. box, but there were, there were coupons in there. This one was from a soft serve place I went to. I don't know how that even got in the house, but I did get this. This was in my P.O. box. This is, uh, from BJ's, which I assume translates to blue jobs, a three month membership. To, to BJ's. That was in my P.O. box. I don't know why. Alright, this next thing uh, doesn't have a return address on it. It seems to have been sent straight from Lego. So, I have no idea what's in this package. Other than that, it's Lego related. What in the world? There's a Lego, there's a bag of just like two bottom halves of people and a, a poodle and a microphone. What in the fuck? Okay. 
Dear Comic Clans, we're sorry there was something wrong with your new Lego set. The parts you need are in with this letter, so you can get building and have fun. We try really hard to make sure all Lego toys are perfect and we take it very seriously when a faulty one sneaks through. Controlling the quality of the toys that leave our factory is a big job and we spend a lot of time trying to get it right. We have a whole department of experts and machines who like nothing better than to catch any faulty Lego sets and we've passed your comments on to them. It'll help make sure this doesn't happen again. Please let us know if you need anything else. You'll find our contact details at the bottom. So, um, apparently these are the missing pieces from a Lego set. <laughs> I don't remember receiving a Lego set or ordering a Lego set. It's just it's just two bottom halves of people and a poodle and a microphone. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's gonna be a Lego set in one of these other boxes or something. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe one of the return to senders had sent me a Lego set, and I've, I haven't gotten it, but I did get the additional parts. Or maybe this is a really bizarre prank of some kind. I have no idea. That's fucking weird. <laughs> um, here's a postcard that's just got the genie from Aladdin on it, and it says, Hey, did you bro? Have a magical day! P.S. I love your content. From, looks like, Sam... Samurai? Samurai? Like a weird spelling of Samurai? XX011. Thank you. Okay, this next one also has no return address. It comes from the Style Vault. I don't know what that means. Oh my god, is this gonna be a pair of sunglasses? There's a little thank you for shopping here card. And this looks like it's gonna be a pair of sunglasses. Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh my god. Whoever sent these is a fucking hero. Just like old times. Yeah. Same color as the ones, the first pair that I had. So as you probably know, I lost my, um, I lost my original purple sunglasses. I don't know where the hell they are. Then I lost my new yellow sunglasses. I don't know where the hell they are. I suspect I'll find the yellow ones when I finally clean my room because this room is a fucking sty and um, maybe I'll even find the other ones. But thanks a ton to whoever sent these. The, there was no name on the box, but um, badass. I would wear these for the rest, but uh, well, actually I can see pretty fine. So yeah, but I'll, 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 I'll put them on later. All right, this is yet another one with no return address. This one is just sent from a company once again. It's got a, uh, got a thing in it. it, says it's for Clear Crystalline Disco Excellence Mouse? What? God. <laughs> it says, you read a book. Here's your fucking trophy. <laughs> what the fuck? Where does this come from? Oh my God. This had to have been sent recently because I just made that video like a week ago. You read a book. Here's your fucking trophy. Oh my God. <laughs> this is... This is, <laughs> I'm putting that on the trophy shelf for sure. Oh, thank you to whoever sent that. I have no idea who sent that, but that is fucking wonderful. All right, one last package here. Once again, no return address. Once again, sent from a company. So we'll see what it is. Oh my God, another pair of sunglasses. Oh, you guys are hooking me up. Let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are great. I'm gonna break this damn tag off. Whatever, I'll take scissors to it later. Awesome. I can't believe I just got two pairs of sunglasses. Lost two, gained two, and there's another part in this. Warning, keep this bag away from babies and children. Danger of suffocation. 
Well, I am a baby child, so maybe I should keep it away from myself. Okay, this comes with the case. Where did they pack it separately? This one's from... Oh. Dear valued customer, thank you for your purchase. It's our pleasure to do business with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Nice fucking case. Oh my god, there's another pair of sunglasses inside the case! Oh my god. And they're all round, too. All of you guys knew that I need my sunglasses fucking round. Hell yeah. Christmas came early this year. Thanks a ton to whoever sent all these sunglasses. I don't know if they were multiple people or just the same guy. Man, these ones are really cool. I like the the full reflection. These are just mirrors. It's, it's not even like they're silver colored. They just are mirrors. Um, that's fantastic. You can see a whole world of chaos right behind the lenses. You can see both halves of my room at the same time. Um, Thanks again to everybody who sent stuff. If you have sent something and it still hasn't shown up in a video and it hasn't been returned to you, I guess get in contact with me um, and find out what happened because, uh, you know, this the day this video goes up, I should have collected everything that was in my P.O. box. So, you know, unless your thing shows up a day later, then maybe it's, it's not there yet. But, um, you know, I should have received everything at this point. So... If you have anything to send, send it soon, because I don't know how long the P.O. Box will stay open for if I move again. Um, but, you know, I own it for the next three or four months. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.